Hello and welcome to Movie Face Off. I am Dr. Cinema, and the reason why this is a special video is because it's my 21st birthday today. Yes, I can legally drink alcohol. Even though it's not really that fun, you get drunk and you black out sometimes, and you do stuff you don't want, to, you didn't want to do. Who cares? I can do it now legally. But now it's time to get serious. We have in one end of this face off. Citizen Kane, one of the most important films of all time, if not the greatest film ever made. It had remarkable symbolism, story, and it was an influence in movies to come. Yeah, let's put it up against the room. And the reason why I put it up against the room is because fuck you, it's my channel, my birthday, I do whatever the hell I want. So, we've got five rounds of this. Let's not waste any more time. Round one, story. So the story of Citizen Kane is that at the beginning of the film, Citizen Kane, a.k.a. Foster Kane, dies, last word Rosebud, and the reporter is tasked with finding out the meaning of his last words, and it chronicles his life. The story of the room is... I know stuff happens in the room, but... What was the story again? I mean, yeah, we've got... We've got Mark and Lisa uh, having an affair behind jo Johnny's back. Uh, there's a party and a bunch of conversations, but there really isn't a story, to be honest here. I think this is Tommy's attempt to make a movie about life and all the stuff that happens in it, but it is lack of focus on story. So, this round goes to Citizen Kane. Off to a good start. Round two, main character. Main character is Foster Kane, the big important man of the film Citizen Kane. And in the room, we have Johnny, a.k.a. Tommy was so. So, actually, this round's gonna go unexpectedly. While Foster Kane is, of course, the star of Citizen Kane, he's not really that much more than it was probably expected. I mean, he, the character delivers on the importance of his story, but. You don't really hear a lot of people talking about the wonderful character of Foster Kane. Johnny of the Room has become larger than life. He is one of the most quotable fictional characters ever, brought to you by the most quotable man ever. Well, one of the most quotable men ever. It's insanity, but he's become so much larger than life that he's even being celebrated. So, this round goes to the room. Yeah. Round three. Supporting characters. I don't remember a name of a single supporting character from Citizen Kane. I mean, I know they're there, but... Can you tell me what their names were off the top of your head? So again, with the room, their characters in this category have become larger than life. You've got Mark. You've got Lisa. You've got Dan... Denny? Danny. Danny. Hell, even the drug dealer who isn't even named in the movie has become larger than life. This round also goes to the room. Holy crap. Alright, round four, round four. I'm gonna make round four easy. Uh, special effects. The room, horrible special effects. Larger than life a little bit, yes, but horrible. Citizen Kane. It was actually fairly good. They used some special effects, practi mainly practical, that were actually pretty cool to watch. So, yeah, this round goes to Citizen Kane. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm not being super descriptive in these rounds, but this one is the big one. Round five. Legacy. So, like I said, the legacy of Citizen Kane is that it is arguably the best film ever made. Of course, this did come out in the 1930s. 
and a lot of improvements have been made to cinema in that time period. Since that time period, I mean. The Room has a legacy for being on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, as being one of the worst movies ever made. However, it is the perfect film to describe a movie that's so bad, it's hilariously awesome. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's the characters are not well defined, the story makes no sense, but God damn it, I keep saying this, but it's become larger than life. It has spawned midnight screenings, an entire cult that celebrates watching the room at these midnight screenings by throwing spoons at the screen, wearing tuxedos, and throwing a football around, and just constantly quoting the movie. I mean, other than Rosebud, can you really quote Citizen Kane? The Room is so big in popularity, we have an Oscar-caliber film about the making of the movie. But again, this is technically a bad movie, and Citizen Kane is considered one of the best movies, and not the best movie ever made. But again, so much stuff has happened since the 1930s that, does that legacy still hold up? So I've had The Room on Movie Face-Off a couple of times. Once against The Big Lebowski, The Room failed. And again against The Disaster Artist, it failed. However, I, I'm giving it to The Room. I'm giving the round and the face-off against Citizen Kane to the room. The room is the winner. Oh my god, it's the end of days. Chaos in the streets. Ghosts uh, just eating all the food. Cats and dogs living together. Mass hysteria. Terminators coming from the future to kill us. Oh my god, what have I done? Ugh, you're tearing me apart. Yeah, so that's my big birthday video. Coming Tomorrow, on Friday the 13th, we have a very special video for you, but the room won. What the fuck?